thank uh, the organizer from three times uh, for this opportunity and uh, uh, also the other presenter for the great presentation. I hope to be up to you. Uh, okay, my talk uh, today is about the assessment of the suitability of DPS system for geophysical application. And um, as you may understand, the topic is uh, so broad uh, to be covered in, the, uh, in its entirety. So uh, on this occasion, I will focus on one particular application uh, to then draw some general conclusion that I think it could be assumed valid for the complexity set of different uh, um, geophysical applications. The application uh, that is more familiar to me is uh, the monitoring of leaves with the aim of leakage detection. Historically speaking, um, uh, this application, I think, can be dated back uh, to the beginning of the 90s. And uh, I remember here that uh, the principle of the DS uh, uh, measurement was uh, firstly proposed uh, uh, by Artog uh, some years before. And um, uh, about this application, uh, we have uh, at the moment almost 30 years of uh, uh, experience. Uh, briefly, in this kind of uh, problem, uh, one wants to detect the, seep the seepage flows. And uh, uh, this can be done generally using the temperature passive measurement uh, uh, that can be collected uh, across the leaf itself. Um, the methodology was uh, initially referred to uh, as the gradient method, as uh, um, the user is interested here in the natural occurring temperature gradient and fluctuation uh, inside the leaf body. Um, you can see in the left uh, plot uh, a common installation topology um, in which the fiber cable runs along uh, the leaves uh, at different uh, positions. Um, for example, in this slide, you can see some picture that uh, has been taken on the field uh, during an installation of a DPS system in the north of Italy, at which I participated along the Adja River. In particular, you can see in, in the middle uh, the digger during the trench excavation uh, for the deployment of the fiber cable. And, uh, but uh, uh, in the planning of a DPS survey, one must define different aspects uh, and I would say different details about the system before uh, reaching the biggest work. Um, here there is a brief uh, and, and surely incomplete list of some of these aspects uh, and of these details. In particular, um, uh, one important thing to be to, 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 uh, that has to be chosen uh, is the kind of integrator to use. Nowadays, uh, we have shown by the, 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 the previous presentation that uh, we have different options, Raman OTDR, Raman OFDR, Brillon OTDX, Brillon OFDX, depending on the time on the frequency domain, or even Rayleigh OFDR. Um, then uh, another thing that is really important, as we have seen in the previous talk, is the type of cable. And the, uh, here, I mean, um, the type of cable that one uh, can use is mainly determined by the constraints that uh, one has in the field in terms of ruggedness, bending radius, number of fibers, if these fibers are multi-mode or single mode, um, if the cable is hybrid or not, and we will see later uh, more about this, or you can even go for engineered geotech style or geogrids. Another important thing is the topology of the, the position. Here, uh, with the term topology, uh, I refer to the geometrical disposition of the fiber in, you know, on the field. Uh, if uh, one looks at the literature, uh, most of the application uh, deals with uh, fiber that rarely extends over five kilometers. But still, it's really an important thing because the geometric deployment uh, can be uh, I mean, affected also by the kind of interrogator that you use. Uh, at the very beginning of this kind of application, the spatial resolution was uh, around one or two meters. Nowadays, we can reach very smaller value for spatial resolution. And there are also other work around to improve artificially the spatial resolution. Uh, again, the configuration of the measurement is uh, another thing that has to, to define before the installation and uh, is a topic that is strictly related to the topology and uh, to the interrogator that one wants to, to use. Uh, for sure, you know better than me that, uh, and we have also seen in the previous talk that there are two options, mainly dual-ended or single-ended scheme, depending on the accessibility of, uh, of the two ends of the cable uh, that you may have. And also the termination of dual fiber cables 
uh, can be important. And in particular, uh, recently, as we propose a different uh, termination uh, engineer to, to achieve uh, uh, the dual identity configuration in a more easy way. This aspect is also related to the calibration of the system that uh, we have uh, uh, about this, we have listened to a very interesting uh, talk just before my presentation. And uh, in this case, uh, it's important to define before this aspect because you may need to deploy additional fiber and set uh, the temperature bar. Despite, to be honest, most of the work that uh, we read uh, in the literature relying on the manufacturer specification rather than on uh, real uh, calibration uh, done in, in the field. Finally, the availability of uh, trainer workers, uh, expert installators. Uh, while not mandatory, according to my experience, this could make the difference in some situation. Then once uh, uh, the installation uh, has been done and uh, you start to collect the first measurement, uh, one may encounter additional data analysis issues. As those uh, that uh, I listed here refer in particular to the early field uh, experimental um, application. But some of them, I mean, are still valid uh, nowadays. In particular, the lack of analytical and numerical models of the thermal flows and uh, inside the leaves and uh, the lack of data analysis model. But uh, over the years, several approaches have been proposed to address uh, these particular issues. For example, the dissimilarity approach, according to which the temperature fluctuation of affected zone over the day are different from those of, uh, let's say, healthy zone. Here you can see, for example, uh, an example of that. The temperature flu uh, fluctuation evolution over time of uh, leakage uh, prone zone oscillator, uh, in particular X3 and uh, X2, and um, uh, while uh, the other one, the, the one, the, the, the one that are referred to an affected zone does not oscillate. Uh, another approach uh, that uh, has been used to identify the affected zone in, uh, is the, the so-called source separation approach. Uh, actually, in this method, uh, it is assumed that the different thermal source drive the leaks thermal behavior. So um, once you collect the data, the first thing that you have to do is uh, to uh, filter the, seasonal, the seasonal and daily temperature fluctuation. Then by using uh, advanced uh, math tools, uh, such as uh, the singular value of the composition and independent component analysis, you can identify different uh, uh, aspects of, uh, uh, of your leaves. In particular, you can identify ground singularity you can, uh, that are actually zones in which the soil properties are different. You can identify grains and also leakage, as shown in the, in the plot on, on your right. Finally, another method is the input response method, in which the temperature response is uh, actually modeled as a convolution of function describing the leaves response uh, respectively to the air and to the water loading, temperature loading. Um, in this case, the position of the leakage can be retrieved by analyzing uh, the uh, model input response and uh, its uh, driving uh, parameters that are the single dumping factor and time uh, lag loading response, as shown in the, in the, in the, in the right uh, plot. Uh, of course, many other uh, signal processing methods may be cited, um, not only interestingly applied to the temperature traces, but also directly applied to the optical signal. Uh, that may be the Stokes or anti Stokes backscatter signal if you go for Raman DTS, but it, it could be also the Brillouin spectra or the Rayleigh spectra if you go for Brillouin or let's say Rayleigh based DTS system. Another issue that is often reported. Uh, is actually the lacking of physical models to validate the data analysis uh, performed on the data that you actually collect on the field. But uh, as uh, we have seen in a previous talk, uh, it is possible to perform experiments in small and medium scale physical models. Here, for example, I show you an experiment in a very tiny sandbox. Uh, if you look at the dimension that is here, it is less than one fourth of a cubic meter of volume of, of soil inside this box. And the aim of this experiment was to track the towing path of, what, of hot water that uh, was driven by a pressure head. Um, the fiber that has been used here is a standard telecom fiber of uh, uh, 900 micrometer, micrometer teflon jacket cable that 
was installed uh, um, in 15 sections across the box side, uh, per perpendicularly to the expected flow of water, of water water. And uh, just an example of the results that can be obtained with uh, this kind of, uh, of experiment. Uh, here you can see a contour map of the flow. Um, I will try to faster move faster. And um, uh, for this kind of experiment, uh, the interrogator that was employed was a Rayleigh interrogator based on optical frequency domain spectrometry with a, a spatial resolution lower than one centimeter. Finally, another issue that is often reported is the, the identification of distant features, but uh, this issue can uh, also be addressed not only from the numerical or data analysis side, but can be also addressed at the hardware side, for example, by using hybrid uh, cable, uh, like this one that is uh, shown here. Um, one more minute. Are, yeah, which actually integrate the copper wires with the fiber. I will not spend mo not many more uh, words about this, this because there will be a talk about uh, the heating process. So uh, coming to a conclusion, uh, is the DTS a suitable technology for ge geophysical application? Yes, in my opinion, it is. What uh, I have tried to show you in these slides are some aspects of this technology implementation um, that over the year have been addressed as issues, but uh, became then opportunities. What is important to me to highlight is represented in this, uh, in this scheme, in this draw. To really make the DTS suitable, you should consider all, this, all the three aspects that compose a complete DTS system. The technology, the system integration, and the data analysis. As I said, over the years, several issues have become opportunities to develop one or more of these aspects further. Nonetheless, uh, one thing has to be clear. DTS, like most of the, the distributed fiber sensing systems, is not a transparent technology, like it could be, for example, the single point fiber optic sensor technology. You cannot replace a standard temperature sensing system with a DTS uh, without pain and without having the user to adapt uh, um, and change somehow his way to perform the measurement and analyze the data. This is because the nature of the data that you can, can collect uh, with a DTS is transformative. Uh, is, is transformative. transformative as uh, um, originally highlighted by Professor Frecker. Frecker. But uh, I think that to disclose this potential, you need three experts that synergically work together. A photonic expert, a system integrator, and a data analyst. Thank you.